G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean, and today we're making a video about how much RAM you need for your personal PC, depending on a whole bunch of different scenarios, whether or not you're someone who has a lot of programs in the background, maybe you're playing some really demanding, demanding games, maybe you're editing 4K footage, or maybe you're a streamer, or maybe you're someone who does all of that and more. So we're just gonna be going through and seeing how much RAM is taken up by some of those programs so you know how much RAM you need or maybe how much you need to upgrade to. The RAM that we're gonna be using today to test all of this out is some RAM that was sent over to me by the team group. This is the T-Force Extreme 32 gigabyte, 3600 megahertz kit. So it's definitely gonna be capable. Um, this is the white edition as well, which has amazing RGB. And if you're looking for that sort of all white look inside of your PC like I am, this is definitely a kit that you wanna be checking out. Now, if you guys like this kind of content, don't forget to hit the like button, get subscribed, and let's begin. All right, so this is my gaming streaming setup, as you guys probably already know. Um, this is the PC. Uh, personal PCs had a bit of an update, but we've got that T-Force memory in there um, with a Strix 2070 Super, a Ryzen 9 5900X on a B550 motherboard, a couple NVMe drives with a bunch of Lee and Lee, you know, fans and all-in-one coolers and stuff like that. The lighting is all synced up and it looks absolutely insane. Um, but with Windows, this is a fresh installation of Windows. We've just got the essential programs on that I use every day, um, as well as, you know, the games that I play most frequently. So you can see down the bottom here, we've got, you know, our G-Hub software for our keyboard and mouse, NVIDIA Focusrite for our audio interface, and that's the keyboard and mouse there. Um, and then just, you know, the standard Windows security in the background, plus, you know, all the normal little icons that you get. Now, in terms of how much RAM we're currently using, using at the moment 3.4 gigabytes of RAM and 0% CPU usage. So, in terms of just like, you know, booting up Windows and getting everything running, um, you don't need too much, but once you start to load up some programs, as you'll see in a second, that can quickly change. All right, so we've got a bunch of programs open. Um, we've got a Mr. Beast YouTube video happening. We've got all the RGB inside of the PC synced up and it's actually changing color. It's going through that rainbow cycle. And I'll talk a bit more about why that's important in a second. Um, but in terms of the programs that we've currently got open, we've got Discord, we've got Tidal for music, we've got Battle.net, we've got Steam doing some updates, we've got some software for the RGB. Um, we've got a bunch of different Chrome tabs open there, obviously for you know, maybe your PC shopping, looking for new computer parts. Um, and I think that this is a pretty realistic scenario for a lot of you in terms of the amount of programs you'd have open, the kind of content you'd be you know, putting up on your screen and consuming. And in terms of RAM usage, we've gone from about 3.9 to about you know, 6.9, so it's another three gig. So definitely eight gigabytes is gonna be a minimum if this is all you're gonna be doing. Um, and then CPU usage, we've got about, you know, what's that, 10% CPU usage roughly. I mean, obviously a lot of this stuff is static at the moment other than the video. But I thought the part that was quite interesting out of all of this was if we look at the CPU process, you can see the number one thing there is the lighting service from ASUS uh, to actually keep all of the lighting in sync with each other. And you know, then obviously we've got Chrome, which is expected, then Tidal, and then the l Connect software for the, uh, for the RGB and for the fans. So just wanted to make a note and call out that if you are someone who's going to have a PC with a bunch of RGB inside of it, if you don't necessarily need to have these programs open, I'd recommend uh, closing them, um, just so that way your PC has every resource available to it um, when you're, you know, you're multitasking or you're doing some serious work. Um, but what we'll do now is we'll open up maybe Call of Duty Warzone, we'll leave all the programs going, and we'll see how much more of a load that puts on the system because as some of you might or might not know, Call of Duty Warzone is a very, very demanding game. All right, so we've got Call of Duty Warzone fired up. Um, I'm just literally spectating someone right now. This is a real lobby though. We're running at about 110, 120 FPS, depending on the, you know, where we are on the map and what we're doing. Um, we've got all of our programs still open. We've actually added though one more, which is just hardware monitor, just because it's pretty normal for you when you're gaming. I don't know, it is for me anyway, to be able to sort of 
just quickly monitor my temperatures on my system when I am gaming and streaming and putting my system um, you know, through its paces. But in terms of CPU and RAM usage, we've obviously jumped up a lot on the CPU, you know, 50% load on a 12 core, 24 thread system. Um, and with the memory, we've jumped up to 18, 8, almost 19 gigabytes of RAM usage. So we've gone up, you know, quite considerable amount, just literally having one game open whilst also having all of these programs. And we're not even, you know, recording or streaming or anything like that. I think this is a pretty realistic scenario for a lot of you out there. So if you are looking at building a PC or upgrading um, 16 gigabytes in this kind of scenario, would be definitely bottlenecking um, your PC and you'd be definitely leaving some performance on the table. Um, definitely need to get yourself maybe a 32 gigabyte kit like this one from, uh, like from Team Group. But let's go ahead and fire up OBS, maybe get the game recorded and see how much more that puts a load on the system. Okay, so we're still in that same lobby, the same game. We've got OBS fired up though and we're actually doing a recording right now. We're recording at 1080p, 60 frames a second, maximum quality using the NVIDIA NVENC encoder. So that's basically the scenario that's happening right now in front of you. And we've jumped up to 19.5 gigabytes of memory. CPU usage is actually pretty much still around the same number because the NVENC encoder um, on that GPU is doing a lot of the work. But in terms of RAM usage, we've definitely gone up a few notches, but still, you know, not too much. I was actually expecting, to be honest with you, to go up above the 20 gig mark, but considering what we've got going on right now, 19.5 um, gigabytes or 19.2 is nothing to, um, nothing to scoff at. Now let's actually go ahead and just do a dummy stream and see how much that changes things. Okay, so here we are, we're still in the game, we're just spectating obviously still. Um, we're obviously now, instead of the recording, we're doing uh, streaming, so we're streaming to my backup Twitch account, and we've got here basically all the programs still open in the background, and then you can see here how much RAM we're using, still hovering around that 19 to 20 gigabyte mark, so you're definitely going to need more than 16 gigabytes of RAM to pull off something like this. But now let's actually get a camera added to the mix because assuming you are streaming or recording, you might wanna have a face cam or maybe a camera pointed at your mouse or something like that. So let's get the camera hooked up to the capture card. We'll actually go ahead and use our DSLR and we'll see how much more of a load that puts on the system. Alrighty, so we're here again. We're still in the game, uh, still playing. There is now nine people left this guy's doing pretty well killed eight people so far we've got the stream still running we've added the face cam um so we've got our dslr camera here which is you know capturing obviously me um pretty strange for anyone who joins into twitch right now you're going to be a bit confused about what the hell is going on um we've got all of our programs still open in the background and we're using still around about 19 19 and a half gigabytes of memory and it just sort of shows you how efficient um, you know, the GPU, CPU is, is I guess, you know, channeling everything and processing everything. The team memory has not faulted yet, still running absolutely flawlessly. Frame rates are still really, really consistent to what I've experienced in the past. And I think this is a pretty realistic scenario for you guys who are gamers, streamers, want to use a camera. Um, this is how much RAM you're going to need in order to run this, you know, um, properly and make sure you don't have any glitches or any faults on your stream. So now let's go ahead and close these programs, open up maybe Adobe Premiere and Photoshop, um, which is what I generally do once I've finished making a video like this and we'll see how much RAM those programs start to sort of eat up. Alrighty, so this is basically the last part of this video which is worst case scenario. Um, if you're someone who likes to be able to edit their videos, have their thumbnails open um, in Photoshop, maybe you're watching a Mr. Beast video, maybe you've got your music playing, Discord open, Google Chrome tabs, literally everything in your arsenal other than running a game on, on like another screen. Um, and you can see here at the moment, 
we're using around about 20.4 gigabytes of memory, um, which is actually not too bad. But if you start to scrub on your Adobe Premiere timeline, you'll probably notice that when you're scrubbing around, that your RAM usage will start to jump up a little bit. So you can see we've already gone to 22. I saw it a moment ago at like 24. Um, and this is at full res, 4K footage, you know, 100 megabit bit rate, um, 30 frames a second from the Sony A7S II. So looking at around about 25, can we get it to go to 26? I don't think it will, but around about 20 to 24 gigabytes of RAM out of 32 um, with everything open. And I mean, the system isn't faulting at all. I have to say it's actually running really, really well. Um, we've got a bunch of programs open in the background. We've got Steam, we've got Battle.net, we've got Elkin Next, we've got Tidal, we've got VLC. We've literally got everything and we're using around about, you know, 21, 22 gigabytes of memory. So to summarize this video in terms of how much RAM do you need if you're going to be content creating, making videos, maybe multitasking, super power user, gaming, streaming, all that kind of stuff. In this day and age, I wouldn't be going less than 16 gigabytes, absolutely not. I would say a 32 gigabyte memory kit like this one from Team Group, the T-Force one, is absolutely going to serve you so well. This hasn't actually faulted on me at all, and I didn't expect it to. Um, obviously, this is a really, really reputable brand that's done amazing things in the memory space. But if you're going to be, you know, thinking about the next year, the next two years, um, about, you know, what sort of system requirements you might need, I would say that absolutely, you know, 32 gigabytes of memory should be the, the new standard. I know a long time ago, 16 gigabytes was definitely the minimum. Um, but considering all the things that we're doing now during COVID, making your computers um, more and more a part of our life and we're doing so much on them they're a way for us to make money and create content i would say that 32 gigabytes of memory is absolutely necessary all right guys so that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it i know that it was a little bit different in terms of how i normally make my content it was fast and it was raw um, parts of it, well, most of it was done with my iPhone, which is not the best quality, but I think the most important stuff is the, the content, the data that you guys get out of it. And I do think that it will make a lot of sense if you're looking for RAM and you don't know how much to get, I think this is going to help you a lot. Speaking of RAM, big thank you to Team Group for sending over their memory kit for me to sort of put it through its paces and showcase it. It definitely is an incredible kit and performed really, really well. Um, so definitely check them out if you are considering buying some. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed the video, chuck it a like, get subscribed. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave it in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.